Meeting to come to order. Today is Tuesday, March 15, 2016. This is a regular voting meeting of the Prescott City Counter Council. I want to welcome everybody who came in today to participate and take time out of your day. Uh, we have a lot of business, so I think we'll get right to it. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, do you have any introductions? No, sir. You said to you. Let's get right to it. Okay. Uh, we have invocation by Pastor uh, Mike Gaston of the Heights Church and the Pledge of Allegiance led by myself. Before I pray, as a pastor, can I say as a new resident of the town, less than a year, we love living here and we thank you for all the work you're doing to keep it a wonderful place to live. Just a little side comment before I put on my pastor hat. <laughs> I'm glad to lead us now in a word of prayer. Lord, we do thank you for the beauty of this place. We thank you for this town and the joy we have to live here. We feel very privileged and we know all good gifts come from you, so we're grateful to you for that blessing. And we're grateful for these folks who put so much time and energy into keeping this a wonderful place. We know you put them in their places of authority and we pray for them today that the decisions they make would be good for this town, that would be wise, would be according to your will, and will continue to make this a wonderful place to live. Lord, thank you for them. Thank you for putting them in their places of responsibility and authority. We pray they would find joy in it and that they would serve well. Thank you in advance for how you'll answer this prayer. And I pray this in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Please join me in a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Mayor Oberg. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Lamerson. Here. Councilman Baer. Yes. Councilman Lozell. Here. Councilwoman Orr. Here. Councilman Shiska. Here. And Councilwoman Wilcox is absent excused. You have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, City Manager, you have any announcements? Uh, no announcements, Mayor. Okay. Uh, we have a couple of presentations. First one, please. Um, item A, update on Yavapai College presented by Dr. Penny Wills. A little bit taller here. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. I appreciate that. Uh, before I begin, I just want to go ahead. And I, I heard some startling news this morning on the radio <laughs> that um, I understand I'm supposed to be the highest paid college president in the nation. Um, that was news to me, news to my husband, for sure. Um, <laughs> I want to assure you that I am not the highest paid president, college president in the nation, nor in the state, nor in the county. <laughs> So um, can we talk about our college? And I mean our college, meaning your college. I have the honor and the responsibility to serve as your president, but it's our college. It's a community's college. You have in front of you two publications, and I know my time is very limited, and it's always dangerous to give a president a microphone. So I will be brief, because I know you have a lot on your agenda. On the first is my community update that we send to a number of people, community leaders, as well as anybody who would like to see this, and educators, residents of the county. And it gives you an, uh, how would I say, an overview of the college. What I would draw your attention to in this is to show you the complexity of the college that serves the entire county. We talk about our centers, we talk about our different things as far as what's at the PAC, what's at the Verde, the Regional Economic Development Center, uh, and all we have two comprehensive, comprehensive campuses and five other centers in this county. So this will give you an overview of just what is the latest happening in that. This here I'm very proud of, and that's the second publication. And for members of the audience, extra copies are here at the table. Uh, but typically when you do an annual report, it comes from the administration, not at Yavapai. It comes from the district governing board. And they put this together. Here I want to just share with you just some highlights. On the uh, second page there are the district governing board members and their bios. But it talks about the board ends. And I can assure you, that how this college is operated, the college administration in particular me is more accountable and held accountable more than in any other type of institution because we have our ends, which are education, economic, and community ends, and I have to show progress on those every year and then do several interim reports every month to the board to show. And we look at data, not, oh, are you, you know, it's a good college, we love it. No, that doesn't float. I want to draw your attention to the next page of just a few things there, 2015 by the numbers. $147.6 million is what 
YC brings back to this community and the economy. That's not a minor thing. We're here. Also at the college, we very much take actually pride and so to speak, getting our hands dirty with the economy. We support the economy, not just in that figure, but rather we provide the workforce as well as provide all the data for all the economic developers here throughout the entire county. So we are generating that and we are partners with the economic developers throughout the county to go ahead and make sure that the quality of life from the financial and economic sides is, is supported. Also, just ha how many agree? 82% of Yavapai County residents agree with the statement, YC makes Yavapai County a better place to learn, to work, and to live. So those are some important numbers there. Education ends, more on that, and then economic development, and then cultural enrichment. One of the things I'm most proud of since I've been here, um, we have reorganized two years ago under the Regional Economic Development Center and uh, created that. I've mentioned you know, some things that are happening there. The director, Alex Wright, is a year and a half ahead of schedule already with doing contract training for our existing employers and companies. Um, she wasn't supposed to do, start doing that until third year. She's already doing it. We have the number one training center, CTEC, and really thank you for touring that. Many of you have toured that. Uh, it is fantastic. It's the number one in northern Arizona, and I would say it rivals. It's definitely number one or two in the state. Um, only behind, if that is possible, behind Maricopa County. That's pretty good for an institution that's only 8,000 students. So I welcome you to come to your campus, your college, and just thank you for your support. So are there any questions that I may answer? Any questions? Let's get on with business. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Dr. Willis. Appreciate it. <coughs> Presentation two. Item B, Certificate of Appreciation to the Prescott Fire Department, presented by Dan Tilsman. Tillmans, Greg Cook, and John Moffitt. Step on up. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, city members, council members. Uh, I'm, my name's Greg Cook. I'm a Honor Guard member of Ernest A. Love Post 6 here in Prescott, and uh, along with a couple of my comrades, and we're here to make a presentation tonight. On an ongoing basis, American Legion Post 6 collects unserviceable U.S. flags from the public so they can be formally disposed of according to accepted Legion ceremony. Because we receive these flags from the community, over the course of a year we, re we receive hundreds of U.S. flags, if not thousands, <laughs> which need to be disposed of. Last month we ceremoniously disposed of a number of barrels of unserviceable so unserviceable flags at the Prescott Fire Department training facility, which we thank. Mayor and Council, uh, the Prescott Fire Department continues to work hand in hand with the American Legion Post 6, which is Prescott's American Legion, to honor our veterans. In addition to firefighters from Station 74 purchasing and donating large amounts of sugar-free candy for the District 8 American Legion Riders uh, annual Christmas program at the Prescott VA, Personnel from PFD were on site to ensure a safe and dignified disposal of our unserviceable flags. Are you going to invite your, your people down here, Chief? Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor, with your uh, acknowledgement, I'd like to invite uh, Chief Essex and uh, Captain Moffat down uh, to accept the Certificate of Appreciation. Yeah, please do. Gentlemen, it is my distinct pleasure to present this certificate to you. It reads as follows. Whereas one of the four pillars upon which the American Legion was founded is to promote Americanism, including the protection of the American flag and the proper disposal, disposal of unserviceable American flags. And whereas Ernest A. Love American Legion Post 6 Prescott receives numerous unserviceable American flags from the community throughout the year and whereas the Prescott Fire Department has provided invaluable assistance to the American Legion Post 6 in properly disposing of these unserviceable American flags. Now therefore, Ernest A. Love American Legion Post 6 gratefully presents this certificate of appreciation to the Prescott Fire Department for your ongoing support of the American Legion Post 6 and your ongoing support of our veterans. Presented this 15th day of March 2016, 
Dan Tillman's Commander Post 6 Honor Guard. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. I might give it to him now that I have it here. Okay, Mayor Kaus, we'd like to give special thanks to Chief Dennis Light, Division Chief Dave Essex, uh, Captain Jimmy Kennedy, and of course, Captain Jeff Moffat um, for their assistance in this project. Uh, it's an ongoing project that we hope to work, uh, continue to work in coordination with PFD uh, to dispose of unserviceable U.S. flags in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Appreciate your presentation. Uh, Mayor, just a, a quick note to follow up from this afternoon's session when we had a uh, citizen take ill uh, in the chambers here. She is doing fine at YRMC today, and uh, the prognosis is favorable. Okay, thanks for that. Thank update. you, Mayor. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Consent agenda, item A, approval of minutes for the city council meetings held on March 1st, 2016. Um, Mayor and Council, there is a correction to on the study session minutes that are presented for approval. On page 7 of the study session minutes, there is a misspelling of um, Ron Owsley's name, and we will make that correction um, on the approved minutes. Um, item B, RP 16-001, revision of plat of Centerpoint West Commerce Park, parcels 1 and 2 of Track A, a lot line adjustment with public utility easements for new industrial building, zoning industrial light, property owners, L&D Development Company, LLC, and Chamberlain Development, LLC. Item C, approval of purchase of Fortnet network security and network equipment from Transource Services Corporation in the amount of $10,063.18 using State of Arizona contract number ADSP 016-098200 pricing, city contract number 2016-189, Cost recovered from various funds. And item D, approval to submit a grant application to the Arizona Department of Homeland Security requesting funding in the amount of $46,182 for public safety equipment to be used by the police department. Okay, if I don't have any questions, uh, do I have a motion? Mayor. <clears throat> I move to approve consent agenda items 1A through 1D. Second. second. Okay, I have a motion, a second vote, please. <laughs> Passes six to zero. Okay, go to item two, please. Item two, liquor license consent agenda. Mayor and council members, on today's liquor license consent agenda, there are two applications for a series 15 special event liquor license. Um, item A is the Prescott Mountain Bike Alliance, the Whiskey Off-Road Bike Challenge. Um, this event is on public property, um, which will be held at the Yavapai County Courthouse Square and surrounding areas. And item B, the Yavapai Exceptional Industries Whiskey Off-Road. This is a, um, on private property being held at the Holiday Courtyard. And this is the first um, event for Holiday Courtyard this calendar year. Um, also on the consent agenda is an application for a Series 16W Fair and Festival Special Event Liquor License. Um, this is the Mountain Artist Guild Arts and Crafts Show and Wine Festival. This um, event will take place the agenda says the 100 block of, South of North Cortez, but it is actually been corrected to the 100 block of South Cortez. Um, that was the original location. It was just on the applications incorrect. Um, there are 10 applicants for this event. The applications for these events have been reviewed and determined to be in compliance with city requirements and are being recommended for approval. And with that, you can answer any questions that you might have. Do I have any questions? Do I have a motion? Mayor, I move to to forward special events liquor license applications 2A through 2C to the Arizona State Liquor Board with recommendation of approval. Second. Okay, I have a uh, motion and a second. Please vote. Passes 6 to 0. Okay, regular agenda, please. Okay. Item 3A. Appointment of members to various cities, boards, and commissions and committees to fill vacancies occurring in the calendar year 2016. Mayor and Council Members, in 2011, the Council established a policy for membership on boards and commissions and committees. That policy set forth the procedures for making rec uh, appointments and recommendations. The appointment process provides for the review and recommendation of applicants by the Council Appointment Committee and then presentation to the full Council for approval. In January, the vacancies for the 2016 for calendar year 2016 were advertised on the city's <laughs> website and in the Prescott Daily Courier. In February, the Council Appointment Committee met to review the submitted applications. And then before you today are the committee's recommendations for appointments for the 2016 vacancies to the various boards and commissions. 
Um, I do want to mention that um, one member, David Stringer, who is a member of the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, but was not up for reappointment this year, um, he has sent in a letter of resignation, <coughs> and um, I'd like to read um, his letter that we received. Um, he says he regrettably, um, regret regrettably, I must tender my resignation from the Prescott Planning and Zoning Commission. For the past two years, I've been deeply um, honored to serve at this important, important city commission. However, I recently announced my candidacy for an upcoming vacancy in our legislative de delegation to the Arizona House of Representatives, and he an I anticipate the demands of the election campaign will prevent me from devoting the time necessary to properly discharge my duties as a commissioner. Um, he says, please accept my thanks for the trust you have placed in me, and it has been an honor to serve the citizens of Prescott. Um, and I just wanted to bring that up um, because in the recommendations there is an appointment um, to, to, to replace or to take his place on the board, and that's part of the recommendations tonight. Um, and also, there are a few members of up, the, there are a few members with us, or quite a few, <laughs> that are up for consideration. Mm -hmm. And after um, you make your recommendations, we'll have them come up to do their oath of office. But with that, I um, will I have it, any questions you might have, I can answer. Okay. Any questions, comments from the council? Well, as chairman of the boards and commissions uh, ad hoc, uh, number one, I want to thank David Stringer for his distinguished service on behalf of the city, as well as other members of the public that stand up to volunteer their time. I mean, the pay's really great, as are the benefits. So I just, just want to make sure that uh, folks understand we do appreciate their time, because time to a businessman is money. And every one of these folks spend their time and their money serving this city. So, Mayor, if I could add to, to Councilman Lamerson that without these boards and commissions, you know, it does seem like a layer of, of, of sometimes uh, bureaucracy, but they are a needed layer. And there is no way that the seven of us could oversee all of these boards and commissions. And, and I say this every year that we appoint people, but thank you. I did it for several years, and sometimes it's not fulfilling, but but we do appreciate everything you guys do. Thank you. As a woman or? Yeah, I would also like to say I had the opportunity to serve on that committee, and it's amazing how much talent we have in our community and that you folks are willing to step forward and share that talent with us. So thank you very much. Yeah, and I want to share the comments you've already received. Uh, I agree with them that uh, we're very glad that many people in the community are willing to step up and, and help us in many in many ways and be a public official. And so uh, I want to congratulate you for uh, stepping up and helping us out. Councilman uh, Shiska. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ditto. <laughs> Do I have a motion? Mayor, I move to approve the Council Appointment Committee's recommendation for appointments to the City's various boards, commissions, and committees to fill vacancies occurring in the calendar year 2016. Second. Can okay, I have a motion and a second vote, please? Passes six to zero. So now, if the members that were just appointed would like to come up front, we'll take your oath of office. So come on up. Wow. He has a time. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. All the way. Wow. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> I will have you all raise your right hand. And repeat after me. I state your name. I <laughs> do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and laws 
laws of the state of Arizona, of the state of Arizona that I will bear true faith, bear true faith and, allegiance and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies, against all enemies foreign and domestic, foreign and, domestic and, that and that I will faithfully and impartially, and impartially discharge the duties, discharge the duties of the office of Member of the, <laughs> and state your, <laughs> right? according to the best of my ability, so help me God, or so I do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to remind you of the tr open meeting law training that we'll be conducting on March 22nd and March 24th, and if you can just let the ladies Super outside. Exciting. Yeah, John Palladini will be in rare form. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Mike. How are you? Thanks for your service. Let me know when we're meeting. Clear the place out. <laughs> yeah, everybody's gonna go eat dinner now. <laughs> Okay, item B, please. Item 2B, public hearing and consideration of a new liquor license application for a Series 12 restaurant liquor license from David Vincent Marino, applicant for Marino's Mob Burgers and Ice Cream, located at 113 South Cortez Street. Uh, Mayor and Council Members, Mr. Marino is requesting a new license for a Series 12 restaurant liquor license. The Police Department has reviewed the application and found it to be in compliance with state law, and the Community Development Department has reviewed the application and found it to be in compliance with zoning requirements and building safety issues. The application fees and license fees have been paid, and the application has been posted at the proposed location for the required 20 days. No, pub no public comments have been received, and I believe the applicant is in attendance if you have any questions. Yeah, come on down. Why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Hi. your business. I'm Dave Marino, and as you know, we took over about the old Kendall's Burger Shop and Dents before that. We've noticed at night <coughs> a lot of people come in, families come in, and they want to have alcohol, and when they don't, they get up and leave. Because that establishment has been such a kid-friendly restaurant for 70 years, we want to have it available, but not seen. You know what I'm saying? There's not going to be a bunch of, it's not going to look like a bar. It'll just be something that's available, because it's really important to us that when the kids come in, they don't see all that. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Do I have a motion? So Do we have move. samples? <laughs> Do we have samples? Oh, oh yeah. Right. Right. I forgot it. Mayor, I'd like to move to uh, approve wherever you're. Oh, close. move to pub, uh, <laughs> move to close public uh, hearing. Second. Vote, please. Passes six to zero. Got him. See. I need an. No, I need another. Motion. Oh, uh, Mayor, I'd like to move. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, to approve. For Arizona Liquor License Application Number One Two One Three Three Six Four Seven, for a Series Twelve Restaurant License for Marino's Mob Burgers and Ice Cream, located at One One Three South Cortez Street. Second. second. Motion. And second vote, please. Passes six to zero. Item C. Item two or three C. Public hearing and consideration of a new liquor license application for a Series Ten Beer and Wine Store License from Jody Lynn. Vernalvis, um, applicant for good to go, located at 3179 Willow Creek Road. Um, Mayor and Council, they're requesting a new license for a Series 10 beer and wine store liquor license for good to go. The police department has reviewed the application and found it to be in compliance with state law, and the community development department has reviewed the application and found it to be in compliance with zoning requirements and building safety issues. The application fees have been paid, and the application has been posted at the proposed location for the 20 days. No public comments have been received, and a representative for the um, applicant. I believe the applicant is here today. Yeah. Come on down.
please identify yourself and tell us about your business. Hi, I'm Roger. I represent Good to Go. I manage one of the two locations in town. <clears throat> uh, we just got bought out. We used to be expressed up, and we'd like to continue buying, selling alcohol. I know where that is now. You know where it is? Yeah. Okay. So you want the, you still want a sample here too? No, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have a motion? Mayor, I'd like to move to close public <laughs> hearing. Second. I have a motion and second vote, please. Passes to six to zero. Okay, do I have another motion? M move to approve. Liquor license application 10133302 for series 10 beer and wine store license for Good to Go, located at 3179 Willow Creek Road. Second. Okay, a motion and second vote, please. Passes six to zero. Item D. Item 3D, approval of CC16-001 <coughs> comprehensive sign plan for Tim's Buick and GMC zoning industrial light APN 106-0808B owner resource holdings LP 1006 Commerce Drive, Prescott, Arizona 86305. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is a very straightforward request regarding the um, involving existing building signage and um, replacement of one of three monument signs uh, for Tim's Buick on Willow Creek Road. And the picture that I have on the overhead screen is the existing building signage, which will remain, totals about 100 square feet. This is one of three monument signs. This sign is located currently at uh, Commerce Drive and Willow Creek Road. That sign will remain. Second sign, monument signage, also to remain. And then the third monument sign, which they're proposing to remove, is a changeable copy sign just north of that Commerce Drive intersection. And that sign is proposed to be replaced with this sign here, which is 26 feet tall, approximately 127 square feet. And uh, we've done a comparison of this comprehensive sign plan to other auto dealer approved sign plans and you see that the what's being requested at 277 square feet is less than the code provisions maybe a little bit more in the monument signage less on the building signage but it falls in the bottom third of the approved previously approved comprehensive sign plans for auto dealerships and with that make you aware that the Planning and Zoning Commission voted unanimously to recommend approval and we have a representative from A and B sign here to answer any questions that you might have. Any questions, comments from the council? Okay, do I have a, a motion? I move to approve the comprehensive sign plan CC16-001 for Tim's Buick and GMC as submitted. Second. Do you have a second? Yep. Okay, I have a motion, second vote, please. Passes six to zero. Item E. Item three E, approval of city contract number 2016-185 with Eagle Management and Events LLC for planning and implementation of a 2016 4th of July special event. Afternoon, Mayor Council, or evening, it's getting real close here. <laughs> Um, as a part of the fiscal year 16 uh, mid-year budget adjustments, council gave direction to staff to go out and uh, seek a, a public-private partnership for hosting the 4th of July event that had typically been held out at Pioneer Park. Uh, we developed a request for proposals and advertised that, and it went out to at least 19 uh, companies, uh, event promoters throughout the state. Uh, on February 11th, uh, we received three proposals. Uh, we had formed a review committee made up of representatives from the Prescott Downtown Partnership, Chamber of Commerce, our Parks and Rec Advisory Board, uh, as well as the Deputy City Manager and myself. Um, after meeting on February 12th and again on the February 16th, uh, the group unanimously determined that the proposal submitted by Eagle Management and Events provided the most uh, com comprehensive proposal with the best uh, chance of successful implementation for this year as it was fairly short notice. Uh, some of the details of the event, uh, it'll be held at uh, 
or proposed to be held at Mile High Middle School football field from uh, 12 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. on Monday, July 4th, which is typically going to be a day downtown with the 4th falling on a Monday that we might not have as much visitation downtown as we would otherwise, or at least in previous years. Uh, Eagle uh, Events and Management LLC will obtain permission from the Prescott Unified School District for the use of the grounds. That has yet to happen. It'll happen on April 5th, but there have been discussions. Uh, the event will provide fireworks display to be launched from the Granite uh, Street parking garage using uh, smaller size mortars. We have uh, talked to both uh, public safety, both the police chief and the fire chief, uh, and they're in concert with the plan. The plan has yet to go through the special event committee. It'll go through the special event committee just like any other uh, event. Uh, there will be a uh, kid zone uh, with three live bands, food vendors, and alcohol sales. Insurance coverage will be provided pursuant to the city requirements, and there will be no city funding required for the production of the event. Uh, again, there will be no financial contribution from the city, and lastly, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those, or I have Steve Gottlieb with Eagles Events and Management here to answer any questions also. Okay, any questions uh, from the council? Thank you, Mayor. Hey, Joe, I just wanted to say thank you. I know that this was one of those things on the, that was given to the city that we had to start outsourcing and leaning down and you you, you came up and, and, and ste uh, stepped up and took care of it. And I'm glad to see some of these things coming, spreading out from Pioneer Park. I think it's gonna be a good thing, so thank you. Thank you, Councilman Lizell, and that leads me to one point I forgot to mention. Uh, we, we anticipate that after this event goes out, we will go out again for an RFP and hopefully maybe be looking for a multi-year agreement that we can be a, little, maybe a little more solid, but this was good to be able to get an event that we think is implementable on such short notice, so thank you. You bet, thank you. Next. Any co other comments or questions? Anything from the uh, public? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. My name is Sandra Smith, 701 Whites Bar. I just have one question. When you set this event up, the field that you're talking about at the middle school is not real wheelchair accessible. If you put a ramp in, please. We, we had not considered that. I know uh, we can certainly look at uh, ways to increase uh, access for the handicapped, and we'll, we'll certainly look into that. Because Thank you for that bringing that up. curb there is, you, you just can't get up it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Okay, do I have a motion? Mayor. I move to approve contract number 2016185. Second. We have a motion and a second. Vote, please. Pass a six to zero. Yeah, item F. Item 3F, award of city contract number 2016-182, CLM Earth Movers LLC for the construction of the Rodeo Ground Sediment Control Project in the amount of $87,674, Facility Management Fund ADEQ grant reimbursement. Mayor and Council, back in 2015, the Field and Facility Services Department obtained approval to apply for and accept a grant from the Arizona Department of Environmental Quality through their Water Quality Improvement Grant Program for the design and construction of the Rodeo Ground Sediment Control Project. The project will contribute to the larger goal of water quality in the watershed and will assist the city in meeting pollutant reductions defined in the ADEQ draft Watson Lake total maximum daily load and the Upper Granite Creek Watershed TMDL. Bids were publicly noticed on January 31st and February 7th and a mandatory pre-bid meeting was conducted on Febru February 8th with seven contractors in attendance and on February 18th we received five bids. The apparent low bidder was CLM Earth Movers, and the city has received written confirmation of their bid. Uh, the company's license, bonding, references, and performance of past municipal projects has been verified and determined to be satisfactory, and the bid has been deemed responsive and balanced. The contract allows for 40 days, uh, calendar days, for completion of the work, and hopefully if we get approval this evening, we'll be giving a notice to proceed to our contractor on March 21st to begin the project. The ADEQ grant is funding 60% or approximately $90,000 of this project. 
of the estimated $150,000. And the city has a 40% match up to $60,000, which we can do through in-kind contributions or a cash contribution. And if we need to do the ca cash contribution, we do have $25,000 budgeted in fiscal year 16 for that purpose. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Questions, comments from the council? Any from the public? Do I have a motion? May I move oh, to hold, approve hold on, city I contract? Think, hold I'm on, sorry. I think we might have one. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Steve Silvernail, uh, 820 Sheldon. I've always had an, a, a very interesting feel about grants. Um, love their money, hate their strings. Um, the in-kind portion of a local share, or, uh, I've always been fascinated by that. How exactly does that work? If you spend $100,000 and you get 60000 of somebody else's money and you got to come up with the, uh, the $40,000, and you're going to do that in kind, where's the real money? How, does, how do you actually make that up? That's just a question. Mayor and Council, um, I can speak to this grant in particular. We have staff time involved in this grant. So the staff is already budgeted and paid for, essentially. But they do use their time. Uh, we had this designed in-house by uh, engineers in the Public Works Department. We also have staff time contributed from my time uh, uh, overseeing the project, when it comes down to the construction, we'll, we'll actually probably put 25000 into the cost of the project. But we have meetings with contractors. We have to plan. All of that time is indirect, uh, indirect cost to the project, but it's budgeted already through the city. We just divert our time over to the grant project instead of some other business, or we work later. And so all that time counts towards uh, our in-kind contribution on the grant. Okay, thank you. Does that answer your question? Okay, anybody else? Okay, do I have a motion? Mayor, I move to approve city contract number 2016-182. Second. Yeah, okay, motion, second vote, please. Uh, Mayor, over. Passes six to zero. Thank you. Last item. Item 3G, request for city funding assistance to aid development of Kayla Mueller Helping Hands Park, Transaction Privilege, Fed Tax Fund, and General Fund for Maintenance. Do we have anybody here representing Kayla's Park? Come on down. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Gary Ballard. 139 East Navajo. Okay. How are you doing right now in your fundraising? We're doing very well. We're still short, but we're doing well. What are you up to right now? <laughs> we have my accountant give me the latest numbers here. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing she brought the big book. <laughs> 175. 175, Mayor. 175? Amazing. Very nice. And you need how much? We would need 42. 42? All right. Uh, Councilman, uh, well, Mayor Pro Tem, I think you had a question yeah. you wanted to offer. Well, the point is, is that we have some other folks that have given indication they want to participate, and uh, to what extent we don't know yet, but uh, should know more by the end of the week. Okay. All right. I want to thank the Kiwanis Club too for your leadership. Thank you, Jim. All right. Now we have uh, some remarks that were put together for me. I'll go ahead and just read these. On February 2nd, 2016, yourself, President of the Qantas, requested uh, financial support of 51000 to enable providing a resilient service for the park, Kilos Park. Since then, we understand that additional monies have been received by the Qantas and that a benefactor may make a substantial contribution for the playground, both of which would uh, reduce or eliminate the 51,000 needed. In order to bring the city's role in this project to a resolution this evening, I propose that the city provide funding assistance on the basis of a dollar for dollar match using the transient occupancy bed tax to a maximum of one half of the 51,000 or 21, 25,500. 
This proposal is made with the understanding that recent contributions and the possibility of receiving additional donations will likely reduce the city's maximum contribution to $25,500. We are pleased to be able to partner with the Qantas and the community in the development of Kayla Mueller's Helping Hands Park. Is there any uh, questions or comments from the council? Uh, any, yeah, Mayor, I just want to say that you know this. We were just talking about this last meeting about this, and and you and the Kiwana stepped up, and and it was suggested that there was some more private partnerships in this. And thank right. you, and and I think this is a win-win for this. Good. I just have, I have a question. Rather than, it, how are we going to manage getting them the money, and and when does it? I guess the time frame, the time frame stop. <clears throat> it's my understanding that if anything over the amount of what they need for the surface would then go back to the city of Prescott in the form of maintenance. So is there a reason why we can't make that a hard dollar of 25.5 and then whatever's left over go back into maintenance? I mean, I'm not sure how you're gonna do it <coughs> financially to, to give the folks money. I, well, I think we're going to be uh, handling the maintenance no matter what. Once it's, once it's built, the city will take care of the maintenance. And I think, uh, Joe, is that, that correct? Yes, Mayor Oberg, that's correct. Okay. Uh, Mayor Oberg? Yep. There is a company here in Prescott. It's called JC Cleanup. I've talked, he wants to be involved in this, but there's just no place for him. But I asked him if he would send his crew over once a month to clean the surface, pick up trash, whatever needs to be done. He said he's happy to do that. Well, we'll take any help we can get. Absolutely. We got plenty to do, I can tell you. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think we're, we're ready to move on to this if nobody else says anything, and uh, I'll take a motion. Mayor, I move to approve funding assistance to the development of Kayla Mueller Helping Hands Park. <clears throat> on a dollar-to-dollar -dollar match basis <coughs> using transient occupancy bed tax <coughs> to a maximum of $25,500. Second. You have a motion and a second. Vote, please. Passes six to zero. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor and you Council. Bet. Glad we could help. Yes, so are we. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's all that we have today on the agenda. Uh, you know, as I've said in the past, I always like to try and close out with a little uh, uh, statement by some of our founding fathers or people that were important in our history. And, and uh, I think this one that I'm going to talk about tonight is one that uh, it's, it can be uh, kind of controversial uh, if we take a look at what's going on right now in our country and what's gone on in the very past. But I think uh, what this... Uh, person says, Teddy Roosevelt Jr., um, or T Teddy Roosevelt, I'm sorry, uh, I think uh, he was very um, conscious of what could happen in history, and uh, I'll just read what he had to say. Patriotism means to stand by the country. It does not mean to stand by the president or any other public official, save exactly to the degree in which he himself stands by the country. It is patriotic to support him insofar as he effectively serves the country. It is unpatriotic not to oppose him to the exact extent that by inefficient or otherwise he fails in his duty to stand by the country. Thank you. This being adjourned.